Let's go ahead and bring in Steiner Sports CEO, Brandon this Steiner. One of the country's top this memorabilia one. mogul. I have an unbelievable guest, Brandon this Steiner. Steiner. Brandon is second to none. I've always told my kids that they kept playing video games. They were never going to make a living off that. So maybe they want to cut down and actually maybe get to the books, do something useful. I can't believe how many times I've told my son that. But the reality of it is I was dead wrong. The problem is I still have no idea how this whole thing works. Esports is a mystery to me. All I know is I'm turning on ESPN. I was on ABC Sunday watching people play video games. And I'm, I'm going to try in the next little while, if you're interested and your kids are playing a lot of video games and you want them to play them less, you may want to hold back on that feedback and maybe tune right in to what's really going on with maybe what's one of the biggest sports right now in this country and certainly the biggest growth potential. Okay, so joining me, Kyle Rudy, Matthew Prisco. Kyle runs the New York Knicks esports team. Matthew, an esports business person, entrepreneur, just getting into it with us at Steiner. We're trying to find our way. Welcome to the show, Kyle. Thank you. I appreciate it. First of all, a quick little gift for you from yeah, our friends at Lids. You. There's not just that, you know, they do a great job, Lids, yeah. with all the different versions of the hats. It's kind of a Nick hat. I figured thank you, you yeah. didn't have this hat. No, I don't. I definitely do so, not have uh, this thank hat. You, thank Lids, you, Lids, uh, one of our sponsors. That. So thank yeah, you. This is awesome. Moving on to the business. You're the general manager of an esports team, man. Does that work? Yeah, so my title is team manager and head coach. Okay. So it's kind of a, I have multiple duties. A lot of teams kind of – my role is different if you look at different teams around the league. Mine is a, a mixture of the business side of it. I help manage, you know, the schedules of the team, whether it be how media people, stuff. How many, how many people are talking about? Yeah, so we have six players on our team. It's, so you're managing six people, I yep. guess they're kids, yeah. or younger people. Yeah, so they're, our team – ranges from 19 to 26 years old because i've been managing several kids myself playing video mm -hmm. games and I, I didn't get paid for that I no mean, my, my I kids i mean somebody owes me some money for yeah. that yeah what's been going on in my house I mean, it's, it's, i'll tell you what it's i got my hands full it, it's six of them it's really it's it's a very interesting situation because we have you know we have our 19 year old he's he's a great kid he's also a big youtuber He's currently in college, and then we have other people who we have a player who hasn't graduated high school. We have a player who so you're managing over a kid who's not even out of high school. No, how he, much, but how much could this kid be making? I mean, could he? Is, are these kids potentially making a lot of money? So yeah, or, so our players in we the league got to get to the money grab right away, though. Yeah, I mean, so we'll work backwards, but yeah, our players in the league make uh, thirty five thousand dollars for the season. Ranges from they moved in April, they'll move out in August, so they're making thirty five thousand dollars plus the prizes that happen during. So we just won a tournament uh, two weeks ago, a big tournament. Each of our players made $9,500 for that tournament, as well as it automatically qualified us for the playoffs, which they get another $4,000 for. So, And then the, the championship team, if we win the championship uh, on August 26th, I believe it is, each player will win another $37,000. So, I mean, they're it's making... Like six months' work. For six months' work. Memo and note to self, uh, let your kids play as many video games as they want, but... Is this like a, a league that is, I mean, does it cost a lot of money to get in this league? And it, why the Knicks Why are the Knicks involved? Like, why is Madison Square Garden involved? Because they're dealing so, with all this big stuff. How big is this? So this this is the NBA who runs this league. This isn't like some, some third-party league that's going on. This is the NBA runs the league. They started it. Adam Silver is all in on it. He was at our draft. I just saw him a few weeks ago at our games. Um, he's he's very, as you know, a very progressive commissioner and Love him. great guy with how no big esports are getting he saw an opportunity and said hey let's jump in on this they created a league so 17 nba organizations have a team right now they're hoping for all 30 to be in by 2020 we already have i think it's going to be around four or five teams coming in for next season so we'll be at 21 22 teams in the nba and the way it works is each team, you know, they drafted their team. And are you playing basketball video games nope. or, or yeah, yeah. what are you playing? So it's it's the game NBA 2K18. So it's owned by Take Two Interactive. It's a partnership between them and and the NBA. So this is a basketball mm -hmm. uh, video game league because there's so many different leagues, Matt. Right? I mean, there's like, I mean, how many different leagues are there now with professional video game players? You get Overwatch, which is huge right now. That was just on ESPN, right? And it got 
I think 1.7 million total uh, viewers. So a million. Seven, I just you know listen. We're, I'm a little slow. I'm old. Right. And I've I've played some video games and not bad, but a million seven were watching people play video games. Yeah, throughout the two days of the grand finals. So. Oh my goodness yeah, gracious! It's, it's pretty unbelievable. Yeah, and, I mean, we wow. were actually lucky enough to be there. Um, myself and three of my players went. We we went to the, it was at the Barclays Center. The finals sold out the Barclays Center back to back days. Sold out Com- to watch. Completely packed to watch. People the, play video games. Yep, to watch the and Overwatch going crazy finals. or? It was, honestly, it was the loudest I've ever heard. I mean, I've been in the Garden. Of course, the Garden is the loudest. Other than the Garden, I don't think I've heard a stadium louder than it was for the, the Overwatch gar- finals. The Garden, you can't. There's nothing no, to pass about no, no, of course not. But, but, but Barkley, yeah. you were going crazy. Yeah, I mean, it was. Now, who was in the audience? Like, that's what I'm curious about. Was it all kids? Was it adults? Was it just very young? No, it's, it's a wide range. I mean, you'll see seven-year-old kids. You'll see. 40, 50 year old grown adults. I mean, it, esports is such a wide range, and that's kind of why it's gotten so big. Obviously, kids will be the first one. You'll you'll think, you know, kids are big into it and they're video gamers, but it really is. You'll see grown adults who who get big into it. I mean, there are plenty of grown adults who you know they like to they get off work and they like to go home and decompress and they play video games. But when you're going back to this, when you had the draft, Adam Silver's there, uh, Mr. Dolan's there. How do you know who to take? I mean, is there like scouting is there like recruiting is there how does that work yeah so there is scouting um, high school kids you're, you're scouting high school and it's, kids it could be 12 year old it's so you have to be 18 oh. you have to be 18 years old to be in the league okay. because these guys have to move out to the cities like our team stays in new york so wherever you get drafted you have to move out there so obviously you can't have you know 15 year old kids moving out living on their own stuff like that so there's an 18 year old requirement um, I think I want to say the oldest player in our league is 33 years old about so that's kind of it's from 18 to 33 as of wow. right now but there's no like you can't be too old to be in the league there's no there's no maximum age you can have you what place is your team in now right now we are currently in I think 13th but like I said we qualified for the playoffs we got eight teams make the playoffs we automatically clinched the playoff berth um, because we won it was called the um, the ticket tournament so you, we punched our ticket and we won our our tournament. Um, you punched your ticket mm-hmm, to the tournament. Meaning you won a specific game, or you were a specific tournament to get in. But you're thirteenth yeah. out of eighteen teams, or but right? the winner. So the way it worked is you have a regular season. You play fourteen regular season games, and there's also three tournaments mixed in there, which are usually for money. But the last tournament that we won, you got I think it was seventy five thousand dollars to the winning team, as well as an automatic berth in the playoffs. So now when we wouldn't have made the playoffs, we're, we're kicking out whoever would have been that eight seed now. So now there's only seven spots up for grabs. Note to Adam Silver, can we work this kind of organization into the NBA? Because maybe, you know, that's an opportunity. That would be for, fun. Right? Yeah. That would be fun. I mean, monkey see, monkey do. I mean, right? Let's yeah. do that. that yeah. make, I like that. Matt, explain to people out there that are watching how big this esports thing is and what you see just from an outsider what the next step is and is the basketball league the biggest or what are the biggest leagues now taking place so right now biggest league in the world is league of legends right so league, league of legends league of legends I, I shouldn't say league league of legends has north american split they have european split and they're getting 75 million viewers in their finals Hold like, on. 75 million people are watching People play video games. That's no joke. But a lot of that viewership's coming from Asia, right? With but where, where are you watching that? Where, like, is it on a on a, Twitch? Oh, it's on Twitch. It's on Twitch. Twitch is kind of the uh, the HBO or, or the ESPN of esports. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I, I, you watch. can call it that, right? It's like the streaming. Si- it's the streaming time. site. So League of Legends is big. That's really big in Asia. Overwatch getting huge in America because they just had the Overwatch League. We talked about like owners like Robert Kraft getting involved in Overwatch. They had the Boston Uprisings in it, were in it. Um, a few other teams involved, like uh, owners like Andy Miller and the San Francisco So this is Shop. real. This is here to stay. A hundred percent. This is the inaugural season, and they just had 1.7 total v- million total viewers. Um, you know, they just aired it on ESPN. Disney just signed a deal with the Overwatch League. Who's the biggest eSport player? Or who's the biggest, who's the biggest player of these video games? If, who's the Babe Ruth or the... Uh, you know the Wayne Gretzky or, or the Michael Jordan. Uh, who's who's the guy that's going to set the tone for other players to come in the future? So at the moment is Faker for League of Legends. Faker established himself as the best gamer in the world. Faker is an Faker, <laughs> but um, okay. it's going to be Ninja. I'm trying I, I think, here. I'm trying here. Faker is his nickname. 
Obviously, that's South it. Korean. That's his gamer tag. I hope his yeah. mother didn't name him that. No, but, they're South Korean. But Faker, Faker's Faker. his name, and has he, what's kind of earnings or what? Kind, how big is he? he? Made two million dollars last year. I'm pretty sure. Faker made two. How old is he? He's twenty. I want to say 21, 22. Drew, can you fact check that? Yeah. Go 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 pull him. Faker. Do you just but, Google Faker and it comes? Yeah, hundred percent. But the thing he's is, twenty two. Yeah, twenty two. But what ninja. His earnings are or what? Oh my goodness gracious! We're going go back to Kyle for a minute, though. We'll get back to Faker in a minute. But you coach a team. Like, what's your day like? I mean, to what? Are you practicing? You have are you? Do you have practice? You're showing them techniques, yeah. and how do you get those techniques to get an edge? And is it practice that gets your team better? Yeah, definitely. So we we work a full day. So we'll get into MSG around 9:30, 10 a.m. You have like a a, a video room where mm-hmm. the kids are playing. And- yep. So we practice actually in the MSG Networks building, um, and we have a room designated to ourselves. It's set up. It's got really nice Alienware PCs and monitors. It's it's the top of the line gaming equipment. So we go in there, each player obviously has their own PC and you get on there and we start at around 10 a.m. and we will usually start the day with watching film on ourselves, our past game and a few games of our opponent that week. So we kind of, you know, break it down like normal sports. You have to break down film. Is it one-on-one uh, in nope. this tournament? So or? it's it's real basketball. It's five-on-five. Five. You have five players on the court, each controlling one player. Oh, so, it's, so you got to be coordinated yep. in, in passing. No yeah, of course. Shoot. Yeah, yeah. You have oh, to so be. it really is. This is a little bit of a skill to get everybody on the same page. Yeah, which that's the challenge is because you're bringing in all of a sudden – you have six players coming in. They've never played with each other. They they're getting used to each other as you know humans, and a lot of people wow. haven't lived on their own. And so it, it really is a process. That's what a lot of my job is is helping you know speed that process up. And as far as actual practice, I have to help them break down film. I come from a background of I used to be a player too. I used to play the game at a competitive level. Basketball, football. Um, I used to play basketball and football in high school, and then. NBA 2K, I played that game. I've been playing since. Once you play on a competitive level, NBA 2K. Mm-hmm. Yep, I played uh, about a year and a half ago for NBA All-Star Weekend. I actually was competing in a tournament, got flown down to New Orleans um, by the, the game developers to compete for 250000 like That's amazing. Like, when don't when you fly, like, do you get the Nick team playing with the kids? I mean, do you fly, or do you have to fly? Like no, so actually the league, we're lucky enough, the league takes place in New York. So every oh, other okay. so NBA team here. flies into New York every single weekend. We have a studio out in Queens. Um, it's called Brooklyn Studios. That's the 2K League studios now. So every team flies into New York, stays in a hotel, and we all go who's, out there and the commissioner play. of this league? Is there so one? The, yeah, the commissioner is uh, Brent Donahue. He's, he's worked with the NBA for years. He's a great guy. I see him every single weekend. Of course, he's there. And he really has a great grasp on – he's getting – better with learning the scene and he really knows the market and he's he's a great business mind. Sponsorships, more exposure, mm-hmm. PR. Now at the studio where these these games are taking place, not a big crowd there or there is? No, it's not a big crowd. This is um, more about the streaming. Yeah, it's our first year so th- the crowd is, you know, you bring in, each team has their own kind of people who come in. Of course, we get more people because we're in New York so we can bring out, you know, whoever, whatever employees or fans or anything like that, friends and family. I know my family's came to a few of our games, and we have players from around the area, from the Bronx, New Jersey, stuff like that, so they get people out there. But when you played the NBA 2K, was that you played individual NBA 2K, or did you play like this with a team? I played it? like this with a the team. There's a oh. game. There's a uh, mode in the game. It's called Pro-Am, and you start a team, and you have five players playing versus another five players. And But some of the some of the eSports stuff is individual, though. Yeah. And some is team. There right? are. Um, mostly... A lot of like sports games, you'll see like Madden is one that's been in the scene for years, and of course that's one-on-one, that's pretty big. Um, FIFA, you'll see right now, has one-on-one, but we're the first sports game that's actually jumped in and have a full team thing. I know in the future the NHL commissioners came out and said that he's interested in starting a league, so we'll see about that if it gets started in the next few years, and you never know, FIFA might jump in, or if Madden ever decides but to take a team route. On the NBA 2K, I guess mm-hmm. I know the answer to this, you're playing with actual players in the game. Nope. So we're not, we don't even play with actual NBA players. They Each of our players actually gets their face scanned into the game, and they're playing basically with themselves. Oh, so you, I'm not playing with uh, Chris Paul no. or, 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 you know, Curry no. or KD. Nope. No draft like that. Nope. It's so actually – it's actually it's, it's – Yeah, it's the Knicks gaming team. They each have their own characters and crazy. avatars that they design. They make them look however they want. Some choose to, you know, have it look exactly like them. Some choose to make it – 
almost like a, uh, they whatever they want to look like. So they could create their own avatar mm-hmm. kind of thing. I have a little bit of an entrepreneur audience. I'm curious, do you see the cash register ringing on this, especially because it's got such a strong following of kids? Yeah. And these days, kids seem to be dropping off some of the main sports. Mm-hmm. Is this where their heads are? I mean, is this where the heads are? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Oh, my God. I, I just can't believe this. I read a study saying that uh, Generation Z has an eight-second attention span, right? So eight when you're for what? And just in general? Just in general, right? So watching TV, that's why you're kind of seeing... I think cable television is... I think I'm still a Generation Z, by the way. Hey, you might, uh, you <laughs> might be. I've ever grown out of that. So I think my <laughs> attention span is less than eight seconds. I'm right with you, man. Yeah. So the thing is, you're seeing kind of TV grow out and you're seeing people like even my little cousin right i have a six-year-old little cousin he literally works an ipad starts playing games better than i do so and he's six years old so So this sport is not where it needs to reach this potential as far as talent and how good the the kids could be at this game is that what's so fascinating about is how good these kids are yeah i mean it's even when we're at the studio to see they usually have like a setup of just 2k kids can come up and walk up and the players who aren't playing right now they're getting ready for the game later they'll come up and play against the kids i mean You'll see seven-year-old kids like have way more hand-eye coordination than you ever expect, and they're way better at the game. And this is just what some kids do. I mean, they instead of going out and playing sports, they like to they stay were, inside yeah, and play this. Yeah. Well, who's the best? Uh, who are the best NBA players at this sport? And do any of the NBA players join in on this? Who, who are the rock stars there? <sighs> at actual 2K, let's see. When I was down in New Orleans, we actually got to play against. It was Kevin Durant. Uh, Damian Lillard was down there. I think uh, Paul George. Paul George is, I know, a big gamer. He Good plays Lillard. Fortnite all the time. Yeah. He, he was at the uh, E3, which was the um, pro. It w- they held the Pro Am tournament, but that was like a big, big uh, opportunity for like gamers to go and uh, showcase game developers, showcase new games. And they brought a couple celebrities in, and Paul George was playing in the Pro Am tournament there too. Who's the best player you've ever? Who's the best NBA player you've ever seen play this game? That's that's what we all want to know. Who can rock? Uh, who can rock? Paul George is pretty good, honestly. Yeah, he really was. He, I mean, he's someone. He's a professional athlete, obviously, an incredible athlete, and he probably could have played another sport. I mean, he's a physical specimen, but he's like kids. Like he likes to go home and just relax and play video games, and that's just what he enjoys doing. And I'm sure he's played countless hours and hours just like normal humans, and he's he's gotten good, honestly. How about normal human beings? Because I mean, I haven't played countless yeah. hours, but I should have obviously. I should have joined, got my kids' room, probably played with them. Yeah, I'd be monetizing this thing and understanding it better. Uh, anything from the uh, any questions, uh, Drew, for these guys? Well, it's one quick thing, uh, Kyle. If you want to touch on your head scout. Yeah. Um, so actually, our head scout for our team is Jerry Ferrara. From Entourage. From Entourage, yeah. Now, yep. do you see Jerry? I'm a big Jerry fan. Yeah. Obviously, he could ball a little bit. Yeah. Supposedly, he has a game. I've never seen his game. Yeah, we, we played could, with him. Yeah, he we claims played with he him. could ball, I mean, literally on a court. Yeah, yeah. we had a pickup game with him at uh, on the MSG court. I've invited him a bunch of times to play in my game. He's obviously probably intimidated yeah. because knowing you know the, the level of competition. Mm-hmm. But a good guy, though, knows what he's talking about. Oh Is he God, a gamer? Yeah. Because I know he's an all, all sports guy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a massive gamer. So every time... Me and Jerry, like, we talk on a daily basis. He's very involved with us, um, which, really? of course, people wouldn't assume. You know, he's this big star and multimillionaire, but he really is a gamer, and he jumped in. Um, he was the first person to get hired for us, and he's our head scout. He drafted the team, obviously. So he's involved. Um, yeah, he's extremely involved. Fun I mean, guy he, to work with? Oh, but he's the best. He, He's like a little kid, too. Like, he'll come in. Every single time we get in there, he walks into our studio, sees all of our, uh, our great equipment, and he, he jumps over to our uh, – our partnerships girl Claire, she's awesome. It's like Claire, like you got to hook me up with Alienware. Like I need this set up in my house. Like so you have I, a I have a laptop team, right the scouts, now. Scouts, does it? I mean, how many people uh, to run this organ? How many people are? are you know, so I'm the only. I'm actually the only full time Nick's gaming employee. Jerry um, puts a lot of time in with us scouting and goes to. If he's in New York, he's at our game every single week. Cool. Um, he gets into practice as much as he can. He's always he's in contact with our players almost on a daily basis, just talking about him, whether it be the game or just about life. Um, he's really in touch with us, and then we have the you rest. See Mr. Dolan around? Does he ever check in? Or I, who's on, who's on the? I mean, are the business people in MSG mm-hmm. now looking at sponsorship and other stuff like that? Are they involved? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of the rest of our team put together. We have a partnerships. Um, is Claire Cotto. She does all the partnerships for all the MSG teams. Um, the the real head of our team is Kristen Burner. She is the Senior Vice President of Business Operations for MSG. 
So she kind of heads this thing. That's that's my boss. That's who I report to. Um, she leads all of our meetings. But I mean, we have a big team when we meet. It's probably about 20 of us um, in conjunction with MSG Networks because we have a show on MSG every week. What time um, is that? And how does that work? Yeah, so we have a show. It's 10 p.m. every Tuesday. Uh, it's about a half hour show. So the MSG Networks team is it's great. What would that show be? I mean, what's that show like? Is it is it interviewing the players that are playing, mm-hmm. going over the review of how they did in the games, or are they competing <coughs> on that show? Highlights of that? Yeah, it's it's a little bit of everything. It'll um, recaps our games. We do interviews after the game. It kind of every time we go out and do fun activities, um, they'll tune in and we'll bring cameras with us and just kind of show what we do for fun outside of it. Um, a lot of these guys. This is their first time in New York. This this would have been a sport for me because I suck at so many sports, and I'm thinking this could have been my sport. I mean, I, I, this would have been my out. I, I probably could have got the coordination of this. I was going to say, what's your hand-eye coordination <laughs> well, like? My hand coordination is pretty good, and also I'm relentless. I, I'd be on, I, would have, I would have been playing those games for like 20, 22 hours out of 24. At some point, I would have figured this thing out. I'm a slow learner, but this could have been my sport. And I would have kicked everybody in my neighborhood's ass. We gotta Instead get you playing some Fortnite, kicked, yeah, right. We gotta yeah, get man. you playing some Fortnite. Is it, is it too, well? Here's the thing: is there a senior league or for older people, or maybe that's something we can think of. Yeah, speaking. yeah, we gotta talk to Adam Silver and to get older that people, going. Do older people play? I mean, are, are guys like 40, 50, 60 years old playing this, or has it not really reached that? I wouldn't say it's like the the normal demographic of the game, but there certainly are people that, around that age who do play. I mean, even yeah. in the studio, we have. We have plenty of people come up and, and say, like, you know, like, let's play. A lot of the studio staff is always wants to get on the we, game we and play go, against we, our guys. We got to come to the studio and really do, do yeah. a live out of there. Because yeah, I don't know awesome. if we're really grasping, like, what this whole thing even feels and looks like. Will we see something big? Because to me, listen, I think, you know, Barkley does a great job and everything, but will we see the big event at the big arena, the most famous arena of all time, Madison Square Garden? Like, will we see a big event there, a tournament or a championship-level tournament there? Could Madison Square Garden, uh, or could this kind of sport take on a Madison Square Garden and fill it up? Is it that big? So our league, I mean, it's only our first year, and hopefully we get to that point. I don't think we expect it to happen in the first few years, but other esports like League of Legends was there two years ago. They sold out the Garden. They sold the garden now. Yeah, they sold. I think it was 2016. They sold the garden now, very, very quickly too. It wasn't like it. It took months to sell it out. It was. That's they not. They sold it out. That's quick. no chitty chitty chat. I mean, no, you, that's, you, that's, you sell out Madison Square Garden. You, yeah. you, I mean, that's there the are like really good arena. rock bands that don't sell out Madison Square Garden yeah. easily. I should say, mm-hmm. but. Wow. So this thing is this ahead of what you thought when you first started, or is it kind of way kind of what you thought was going to happen? Our league is pretty on par of what I think. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the league expectations were, but I, I think we've shown growth year uh, uh, week after week. So that's kind of all you can hope for out of a first year league. Um, if I want to watch this though, let's say I'm a Nick fan and now I want to go get this, yeah, or I want to go become a fan of this. I'm watching this on Twitch or yep. am I? It's Twitch. It's oh. the NBA 2K League. Oh, so it's right there. We click on Twitch. Boom. We click on that, and then you'll see when your games are. Yep. And I guess the playoffs are starting. Playoffs are going to start in two weeks. So. On uh, Friday the was it sixteenth I believe, Friday August sixteenth is wow. the is the first round we're going to be playing at six p.m. against the Blazers. Pressure on you though to produce here. I mean you know listen this is now this is real. I mean are they are you expected to do well in this playoff? If you don't, your job could be in jeopardy, kind of thing. No, I mean I don't think my job's <laughs> in jeopardy. It's still it's still the first year. Um, Hey, I gotta ask. Yeah. Like, I just want to know what kind of tension there is. Tough, I guess, well, tough yeah, questions here. Yeah. You, you, you know, you're winning, or you know, hey, maybe we got to get somebody better. Yeah, no, of you course. Know, but- I mean, <laughs> anytime you come in an organization like the Knicks, I mean, we strive to be the best. We're our full team and staff. I mean, you'll see even other teams in the league. Some of them are. When it comes down to esports, are big in entertainment. So some teams, year one, we're kind of like, you know, we're not sure if we'll be successful or not. Let's get like, you know, a good content team, whatever. When I came in and interviewed this job, I mean, winning was the most important thing. Everyone who works with our team wants to win. Um, this organization wants to win. Even when you walk through the building, at, whenever we win a game, it's everyone's really happy and congratulating us. And it's really cool to be a part of an organization like that that does care so much about winning. Um, so you're it, all in. Yeah, no, we're all in. All and, in. I mean, we're excited to be in the playoffs. We're, we're going to play against the top seed. It's a team that we've played twice already this year. And I mean, they're kind of the powerhouse team, but we're right now currently the hottest team in the league. 
So I mean, we couldn't be feeling any better. You and feel like maybe you could go the distance yeah, here. Yeah, no, definitely. Now, I watched the NBA. You know, I've been around for a while, and I'm a big NBA fan, Nick fan, uh, Nets fan too for that matter. But, you know, are you going to need an assistant coach, or, or do you see that the staffing, like at some point can you see having like a full staff of coaches, or pretty much can you handle it yourself? Yeah, there's actually um, – my friend actually has the same role for me for the Mavericks. He has an assistant right now. I think it's as you see the the league progress, I think you will see more and more assistants coming in because it is there's a lot on the plate when you take on coaching and managing. It's there's a lot going on, especially when you're handling six players, you know, in their lives and everything. And I, I definitely could see assistant. I don't know if we'll have one year two, maybe year three. I mean, we'll see. Um, it's something we're going to talk about as a whole team of what kind of division we see and, and how we want to move forward. But in the league, you will you will start to see assistant coaches popping up. Um, maybe a few years down the line, you'll see two assistants popping up. I mean, it really just depends how quick the league grows and how much how much um, each team wants to really take on. Kyle Rudy, manager of the Knicks eSport team. I got to tell you though, you, you got me intrigued. You you sold me in. You did a good job. I was hoping you could. I wasn't yeah. sure if you could, because you know, I mean, I come into this thing, I'm a little like play games and get. And I've heard about this, and mm -hmm. I watched a little bit of it, and it's been confusing to me. Yeah. But you got me kind of intrigued, like to maybe pop on a Twitch and maybe watch you guys. Yeah, see what you could do. It's great. The production is. You calling the timeouts? You're like mm -hmm. managing the, the actual game part of it. Yeah. Or? So they have. I, I have uh, obviously all the players have mics. They talk to each other on the headset. Um, I'm able to talk to the players during timeouts, and during um and during subs? quarter breaks. Are you subbing? Nope. There's no subs. No so we have we have six players. Um. But you can only sub in like in between games. You can't sub okay. in mid game. So you don't so, have to worry about the subbing aspect. No, nope. you worry about timeouts and then strategy at halftime in between quarters. Yep, in between quarters, timeouts. Time. I mean, I can call timeouts yeah. whenever I want. Um, we have five timeouts, so each timeout is a full minute. It's so hard, like to find. I mean, a really good. I mean, it's so hard to get an NBA job or play yeah. in the NBA. I mean, let's face it. It's so it's such like a needle in a haystack, and you know, obviously, you know, five foot seven. I mean, yeah. a lot of us don't have just some of the general stuff to do that. But this is like unbelievable that you could actually play a, the game you love on this level for money yeah. in a highly competitive and a highly watched mm -hmm. situation, right? I mean, yeah. there's millions of people watching. There's the games on the line, I'm sure, at certain times, and, and that's cool. Yeah, I, I mean, it's you, that's pretty cool. being in the studio too, it's even on Twitch, I mean, it, the production value is so good and the production team has done such a good job kind of advancing it week by week and thinking is of new it, ideas. Is it MSG or is it NBA? No, nope, it's the NBA. It's NBA TV. Yep. They do a good job overall too. Yeah, the you NBA. I, mean, I watch myself. I, go, I watch a lot of NBA yeah. TV now. I mean, they do a good job. That TNT does a great job. I think the NBA has done the – I mean, it's amazing. They, it just seems personal to me. Yeah. When I watch NBA games, you know, MSG does an unbelievable mm -hmm. job. Um, the yes with, with the Nets. But, you know, NBA TV – just something I think just something more advanced yeah. than the other leagues and I, I bet you they're going to nail this down too yeah I mean we actually had our draft on NBA TV as well um, the draft was in the garden got a lot of hype you know got a lot yeah. of PR we saw you know a lot of the GMs and all that I have no idea what the hell was going on I was trying to figure out I was watching this draft like what like what is it wasn't really clear to me so I think probably the biggest hurdle here is the education of the money people Right. I mean, you got all these people doing this, but the money people are probably are slow to slow to understand how to play into this. Yeah. I mean, you see corporate right, leagues, you know, especially. Yeah. I mean, everyone who's in place in, in leagues is usually is more used to, you know, marketing and just traditional sports and understanding the traditional sports uh, background and industry. So having them kind of transfer over to. All right. Let's try to figure out this esports industry. Um, you see a lot of you'll see a lot of younger people kind of jump into it because they have a better understanding yeah. of it as opposed to you know the older traditional sports person. But I think it's good to have a mixture of both because there is things that you can take from the from just the traditional sports industry that that does carry over to esports. Um, but it's it's been a learning process, especially for the NBA. We have obviously one of the best the best uh, leagues in the in the world. They do a great job marketing. Um, I think you could argue better than any of them. They're, I mean, the NBA. I mean, it's, you know, who's hot? Yeah. I mean, probably the hottest league worldwide. Yeah, of course. Obviously, you've got maybe Premier, the Premier League, pretty good too. But the NBA just seems to every year just keep growing and growing yeah. and, and amazing. I got Matt here who's going to be hanging out with Steiner a bunch, consulting and helping us truly to understand this mm -hmm. league. I, you know, he's a Syracuse guy, and we were talking. 
I was up there speaking to the class. He came to me. He goes, I think this eSport thing's real. So, you know, I brought him and another one of his friends in to really just zone in to get our, us you know, acclimated so we can go play in this environment. Because we think there's probably some marketing to be done with some of the players and there's some business to be done with even the collectibles. I bet you those joysticks or those game sticks. Yep. Right? I mean, Mouse probably, pads, you know, keyboards. you win a championship, we can auction those off and yep. make some money, monetize that. Team signed game sticks, right? Yeah. And that kind of stuff. The hat the guy's wearing. I've so seen much. the guy's wearing some very cool. They kind of tend to wear some cool outfits. Mm-hmm. Do you allow them to wear that or is there a dress code? We have jerseys. Um, the league provides jerseys for us, and there is a dress code. Um, I and mean, we have certain partners that. Can we do something with those jerseys? Like go a little game used? Do you think they'd be an interest in that? I think th- I think there could be some interest in that. You know, being that we have our my MSG relationship, yeah. we want to check into that. That's yeah. a nice monetization play, though. I mean, I love that. Yeah, I, I mean, we could sell those jerseys. I, I bet you the kids would want them. I would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's I a lot that. of there's a lot of money to be made in esports, whether it be you know memorabilia, marketing, everything like that. There's which is why you see more and more people trying to jump into it because it really is. It's it's a booming industry right now. I think the the possibilities are endless with it. It really is growing fast. Wow, I got to go watch this because I've only seen NBA 2K, you know, one on one. Now I got to go see what that feels like with five on five. I got I got to go zone in on that. So I'm gonna go check that out. That's cool. Yeah, uh, Faker apparently I looked it up makes around two and a half million a year supposedly. He's earned over one point two million in prize money so far. Yeah, that's the thing about esports is two K. 2K right now is just growing, right? So they're seeing solid viewership, especially recently. I think it was like 760% growth in viewership in like the most like recent eight weeks. The thing about esports, though, is like Fortnite, which isn't even an established esport, is going to be the biggest one very, very soon. You know, Fortnite, they have like online competitions right now, right? One on one or to the team? So, the way Fortnite's structured, right? It's what a. What is Fortnite? I don't mean to be Fortnite, right. in like the most simple form, is literally if you're playing solo game or if you're playing duos, you're playing with one other guy. Is it killing people? Is it yeah, you're ju- there's 100 cars, people. 100 people drop into this, into this big map. Last one wins in the most simple form, right? And you're trying to kill each other. Yeah. That's it. It's a lot of fun. I, I was playing and last night. I'm wondering what the problem is right here in our society with guns and everything else. Just saying. Hate to be the old guy in the room, but can we like, find something that's a little more... Gold Scar is not harmful. A little less violent, a little more a little love, a little more kindness. In, There's a lot of love in Fortnite. There's a lot of love. How, it's a great you're community. You're killing 99 other people probably in all kinds of mysterious, crazy ways, or is it pretty traditional? I'm just trying to shoot you out. Oh, it's all, it's all crazy ways. So in Fortnite, you can build, right? So you're not just like shooting guns. You're building. Um, you have a ton of different weapons. You have like guns. You have rockets rocket launchers, you're able to heal up. See, that's nice, right? A little medical side to it. I wonder if this has a negative effect on our kids. You know, playing this day after day after day, we have a nice wholesome game like NBA 2K where we're just shooting some jump shots, a little fouling, a couple rebounds, and some fancy dribbling. And, you know, we're going to win some prize money with love and kindness and competition, no? Well, I'd say something about that. I I think that the reason why it's not as bad is the personalities in the game, right? So, like, Ninja's the biggest player. If you want to talk about, like, you talked about, like, the Babe Ruth right now, right? Is Ninja the Babe Ruth? Ninja's the Babe Ruth right now, I'd say. You know you're going to be a lot smarter when you go home and talk to your kids today because you know you've been out in the dark. If you're with me, please. I mean, you know, you're going home, your kids are in the room, you have no idea what's going on, and then all of a sudden, like three hours later, they come maybe for a glass of water, and you're wondering what they're doing. They're playing these games against all kinds of people in the country and the world, right? Yeah. Is that how it's working? Ninja has a net worth of six million, apparently. A network of six million. Makes 500K a month on Twitch. More than 140,000 subscribers to his channel. No, he has has 15 million. 15 million to his YouTube channel, he 9 million 15, to Twitch. So he's making a ton of money just off YouTube. That was on Twitch, oh, I believe. Just on oh. Twitch, he's making 500K, right? Now he's throwing all these events. He just got a sponsorship Ninja, with Red Bull. If you're out there, I'm here for Come you. Come talk. I'm We're here, here for you. I mean, I'm here for you. I'm ready to market for you. I'm ready to kill for you. I, I don't know if I could play some of these games, but I can at least we'll get help you, going. you. We'll get you going. Get you some sponsors, whatever we can, whatever we can work out. Wow, this is amazing. This has been very educational. Thank you. Good luck in the playoffs. Thank you. I pre- Matt, thank you, my friend. We're looking forward to doing some deals. If you're out there, you got any feedback, any insight for us, love to hear from you. This show is a little different, a little unique, you got to admit.